and welcome to my channel. Well, as you can see, I carry this Boker automatic Kalashnikov um, quite a bit. Now, one of the things, I've never taken this one apart. I haven't looked at online videos of taking apart. I've got an idea of how this works. And uh, I don't think it's going to be that complicated. But one of the things that can happen with an automatic knife is that. You see that? That button is recessed. So it makes a nice thwack. You think that the knife is uh, fully engaged and you've got a locking knife. Oh, whoops. The only thing is keeping this coming back is that spring on the pivot that makes it an automatic knife. Uh, so that is one extra little thing that's kind of a safety, maybe, but I mean, it doesn't take that much. The, the tension is getting stronger the further I get back. So, I mean, it is increasing resistance, but I'd say this is maybe a pound or two of force. So, uh, what's happening is, you see all that gunk in there? And there's a, here's your closed pivot. So, there can be, there can be gunk in this. And mainly, it's this uh, post right here. You know, it, the action is slowed down. So, when it comes, in that case, it locked. The button, you know, comes back up. So, what I'm going to do is, normally, I, I take a brush you know, like this, or a pipe cleaner or something like that, and get in there and, and knock most of this stuff off and oil it. I mean, you can do this, you can clean this without disassembly, but I'm going to take it apart just for giggles. Oh, and this is another handy little thing right here, is this little disc magnet. It keeps stuff from rolling around, and this is a Kydex sheath that you can turn it into a neck sheath if you want. For carrying this knife without taking a pocket clip off. All right, so let's get our little bits out. I'll save you the hassle of me digging through all this. All right, so we got T6 and T8. T6 on the handles, T8 on a pivot. So I'm going to start with the the handles first. Oh, let's see all this stuff's getting hand model violation. Hand model? No, it just it just happened. And besides, we're not doing a Danny Dino. All right, that one feels like it's got Loctite on it. This is where that little magnet comes in handy. Let's take this stuff out. Let me put it over here. Eek. And it stays there. Get out of the way, you. Earthquake! Earthquake! Ooh, right on her face. Let's have it as more of your necklace here. We don't want to cover up that face there. She's probably, like, long past dead now, the original one from this photo, but back then she looked pretty hot. All right, we don't want to talk about graves and stuff like that right now. We're talking about handle scales. I'm just loosening these guys right here because I want to get the pivot next, I think. All right, let's deploy this. So it's not under super duper tension. And we'll switch over to a T8. You get over there and attract yourself to that. <laughs> so attractive. All right. Let's get in here. All right. This guy is captive. That's fortunate. Sometimes. When you got a round thing like this, you don't know if it's captive or not, but it seems to be captive. All right, you know what? I'm just going to take this one all the way out. Get over there, you. And now we'll go back to our T6. Remove the rest of these. It's already wanting to fall apart. I can feel it. You go over there. You go there. And we've already got that on. All right, let's, let's just do a 
a lift up. Now, there went the blade. Ooh, pop. So, I didn't know it had a nylon washer in there. That I did not know. Now, we're not going to... Uh, oh, I did disassemble. This little... This is the captive part, the little tail on that spring. Here's your, your D portion. And this little hook will fit into the blade later on. Right back somewhere in here, right there. A little hole where the nylon is showing through. I think. I think that's where it goes. Yeah. I don't know what this other little detent is here probably it's the locking detent i don't know i do not have all the answers um yeah but see all that build up right there that'll that'll prevent it so let's take this little spring out it wants to jump away we'll set him over there and all these guys are in place let's take this little spring out He's going to fall anyway. All right, set that over there. And, uh, yeah, let's just brush up on our cleaning techniques. <laughs> brush up on uh, Bad pun. Bad pun detected. Not really, if you had, like, an air compressed thing, you could do this just as easily. Let's look at this scale here. This is kind of like rough. It's, it's not polished. Well, of course, this is all pebbled. Clean out this recess a little bit. That's really all it needs. Now, the blade, we're going to take the little washer off. He won't stick to the magnet, but he'll stick by the magnet. A little brushy here. A little brushy. Now, I have alcohol and Q-tips. I'm just going to remove all the oil because we're going to replace it with KPL. I love the smell of KPL in the morning. It smells like knife maintenance. All right. Let's get back here. A little closing detent right there. That's an important area to keep clean. And that mates up with the post up here, which is also another thing to try to keep clean. That's where pocket lint gets, and this is what's preventing it from closing because... Eh, this little post right here, you can see it's tapered. And if gunk gets built up in there, it'll never come up all the way. See, this is a little captive spring sits in there, and it sits in this little ledge. And it gets pushed up by this spring. And that's where it engages that notch. And if you've got it's not necessarily a weak spring. It's just crap, you know, built up around there. If you've got crap built up around there, so that's what you got to watch out for on these type of knives. All right, we got that. Clean, let's clean this area out. All right. Fairly gunky. All right, let's get our KPL out. Paging KPL. Paging KPL. My other one, I don't know where the other bot. I got it laying on a desk somewhere back there in the other place where I film. But it's so used up and so worn that 
the labeling is. This is just regular KPO regular. Mm, Got to sniff it. Got to sniff it. I'm going to put a little bit around here. Oh, I got to get my washer. You must clean your washer. Washer and dryer. I don't know if you can see that, but there's some scrape marks in there. Whenever you got scrape marks, that's where it's rubbing. And wherever it's rubbing, might be a good idea to put some lube on there. Move this all around. Probably too much. Probably too much. But that's all right. All right, we're almost ready for reassembly. Now we got to get that little washer cleaned off. It is flimsy. It's just a little disc. All right, were you on this side? I think we were. We were this way. Right, let's get our pivot. We didn't clean our pivot. You must clean your pivot. No, this is not. What is this guy? He's not the. He is the pivot. To pivot or not to pivot? That is the question. We need our springy. This is where it gets tricky. This is where curse words may be involved. Warning, warning. All right, well, we got we got to generously put KPL all over this, coated with KPL, and this kind of like help it stick there too. I kind of bent it when I moved it around though, so that wasn't good. We we'll kind of do a semi pre assemble here. Warning, warning. Cursing may be involved. Let's see if it's engaged. Ooh, it is. Look at that. <laughs> Quit your crying. Put your pivot back in. There. This is where you need like eight hands. You need to be an octopus to put one of these back together. All right, we need that other little spring and the other little doohickey. Not you, not you. KPL, you are no longer needed right now. Go away. A little spring right here. Guy's sitting on the spring. Sit on that spring. All right. This is getting trickier. <laughs> Stop it. Get in there. The struggle is real. All right. I think we got somebody lined up. Possibly not the pivot, though. There we go. Ah, It's lined in. You hear that click? I'll engage. All right. Let's put the pivot. Pivot pin's got this little star on him, so he's kind of easy to find. Hand tight. Almost. Well, let's, let's get a frame screw on here. What are you? T6 or T8? Oh, you can't see. You can't see when he's in here. T6. Oh. After a while, you get to know what they are just by feel, but. Or I mean by looks, but still. All right, that guy tightened down pretty well. Uh oh. I don't know if you can see this, but this this button is not depressing. So, ooh, that's depressing. No, it's not depressing. Maybe we should have it locked. What do you think? I think your scales got to line up. Covers, scales, whatever you want to call them. These things have got to line up to help support it. Get off there, you. Get off. Stop it. 
No, I'm not putting Loctite back on this because I'm, I have a feeling I might have to disassemble it again to fix this. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it just needed to be oh, where's it from? lined up. We need to tighten this. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the little chihuahua barking on schedule. He's just starting his barking shift. This will go on and on and on. Just try to ignore it like I do. All right. I don't know how tight I want that. I want these handle screws all the way tight now that that's... Whoa. Bumble fingers. All right. And the pivot... I'm just looking at where it is in relation to uh, everything and... Still has that kind of like that issue, doesn't it? Ah! Because I hit the table. Yeah, I still got that issue. I thought just cleaning it might help. That's solid. It's in there. There's a little side to side play. I'm going to take that out. Focus you. Now this one might need some uh, what do you call it? Loctite. I might want to Loctite the pivot. Looking at where it's at. It's a little side to side play. I don't know if you're going to get this all the way out, the side to side play. Oh, yeah, it can go away. So, yeah, I'm going to have to put some, uh, some KPL on it because it doesn't, not KPL, Loctite. Dig through my box. Vibratite thread locker. Guess it's not Loctite, it's Vibratite. Gel Tijordi Rojas. Medium strength. Yeah, it's still. Eh. Something's happening here. See where it's still. Occasionally not getting full engagement. I'm going to have to put some more oil on it. See that? And it's not because it's dirty. It's, it's a rebound, I guess, it's getting. See that? At the end. Huh. Looks like time for a new Kalashnikov. I think I've worn this one out. I mean... Eh, eh. I have used this one a lot. All right, I'm going to take this apart again and put some thread locker on it. Shut up! I call him Yippie. Yippie Kaye. Yippie Kaye. Oops, I switched the wrong one. Friday trash pickup. I didn't remove the old thread locker. Let's 
probably should have. There's a lot of things I probably should do. I mean, if you think about the size of a chihuahua and the amount of energy he's expending barking, I'm just wondering, maybe they got a lot of kibbles there and stuff. I mean, this guy, he barks a lot. I mean, he, he barks a lot. He don't run out of breath. Let me tighten that up a little bit. Get rid of that side-to-side -side play as much as I can. And see if it affects at, at the tightest. See how it affects the uh, opening. I don't think I'm going to get it all the way out, but I might. Let's see. We'll see. Yip. Those high frequency yips, too, man. Those go right through your skull. Nope, it's not locking. See that? Shut up. I mean, it's the owner's fault. And they do know it barked because when it when they're leaving, they'll tell it, you know, now be quiet or some crap like that. And I don't see them usually. I mean, I'm kind of like a non-confrontational type most of the time. Unless you confront me. And then I'm going to confront right back. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if a generous oiling helps. Oh, no. Look at that. Make it worse. Maybe if you put some oil right on the post. Yeah, yeah, that could help. There. Enough oil for you? No. Yeah, so, um, unfortunately, man, I... Normally, I'd like to say, here's how you fix this problem. You take it apart, you clean it, you oil it, you put it back together, and it should work fine. Maybe I just need to break it in, because it's not doing it right now. Well, there's one, see? It's no good. It's no good. This is no good. Now, I haven't used it quite as much. But I do not have the problem with this one. And what fools me with this one is, for this type of knife, you this is where you open and close it. This is only the way you open it. This is the way you close it. But this guy is um, like three times as much as this one. These go for about 50 bucks. So yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. Um, I don't think it's spring tension. I think that spring works all right. Let's try this. Nope. I'm going to do ten openings. One. Two. Uh-oh. Didn't make it. Didn't make it to ten. Sorry, just bumping around. No, failure, failure, failure detected. It could be, this thing's hitting with authority. I don't think it's that spring is worn out. And I don't think it's this, this spring here, the little push detent spring has worn out. Now what I can do is take it apart, take that spring and, you know, stretch it a little bit. And it'd make this button a lot, a little bit more positive. So, I'm going to, I've already done this one too long, so I'm going to pause this for you, because I rambled on too much. Alright, so here's that little spring, and what I'm going to do is a little bit of that.
trying to put it back together again. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put the boker back together again. Well, what are the horses are doing involved with it? Come on, man. We don't need horses with knife assembly. <laughs> the struggle is real. Should I use all the usual excuses? I'm old. I can't see for crap. My hand-eye coordination is not what it used to be. <clears throat> There's a dog barking in the background. <laughs> what else? Come on, i got to have all the excuses. All right, he's lined up in there. Mr. Pivot, paging Mr. Pivot Pen. Mr. Pivot Pen, you're wanted in the maternity ward. That glue is already, uh, Loctite is already starting to take effect on this. Swapping bits, swapping, swapping. Stop shaking you, stop shaking. The camera's nervous, it's shaking. I'll get back in there. Where is a missing screw? Oh, they're all in the handles. Idiot. Huh. Yeah, All right, all tightened back down. We're about to test the stretch the spring technique. We'll see if that worked any. Oh man. Something bad just happened. This button <laughs> will not depress. You, loosen up, you. Wow. I didn't make it that strong. Something wrong here. This, guy, this button will not depress now. You idiot. Yeah. Pivot was too tight. You can go too tight with this pivot. I think what's happening is because the covers are not screwed down all the way, it's allowing this, this base to come up too far. So you have to have the covers on tightly to help hold everything shut up dog wow i've made it worse now i've got a fixed blade it ain't going anywhere it's a fixed blade we don't want a fixed blade sir We would like to be able to close the blade occasionally. I mean, that's why it is a pocket knife, as opposed to a fixed blade. Well, let's get this back to where we... Shut up. Shut up, yippee. I mean, if you go kick the door, it's just going to make them go off even worse. And there's no one to complain to other than the office. And I don't like to 
I don't like to do that. All right. I think that's what it is. You got to tighten it with it in the locked position. And then everything works better. All right, we got that tightened. Let's do the handle screws. All right, test fire. Oh, I hit the table. Seems to be working. Nope. Spoke too soon. See that? So, um, yeah. Normally, I don't like to have resolution on videos. I don't want to tell you. How to take your knife apart and not fix it, which is what I just did. It's coming back. There's nothing blocking that. It's got pretty good tension on this spring. It's better. It's not doing it as much. I'm pushing on it before I close the button just to make sure. I think it might be fixed. All right, let's go through the sequence. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Uh oh. Messed up at five. I don't think it's pivot tension. I don't think it's lack of oil. Messed up at three. All right. I don't know what to tell you other than um, looks like I need a new boker. It's another project I try to work on some other time. Okay, after messing with it a little bit more and just flicking with it, it's getting better. One. Two. Three. Four. Zero out of ten. I was getting it a lot more before. So. I think the oil finally started working in. And the dog is still barking. Dog! We are going to fix you. It's not the dog's fault, really. It's the people's fault. He's just being what a chihuahua is. Which is a barking machine. I mean, if you treat them right, they don't have to bark all the time. But if you leave them alone, and they don't have a buddy to play with, then this is what you get. Put your tools back up when you're finished. There you go. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.